Welcome to Introduction to Accounting, Preparing for a User's Perspective, Expanded Accounting Equation, Computing Revenues and Expenses. This is the last in the series on the Expanded Accounting Equation. You've already learned all of these pieces of the Expanded Accounting Equation in prior videos. What we've done is we've shown that equity can be expanded into its two component pieces, contributed stock, capital stock, contributed capital, there's a number of different names, and retained earnings. Capital stock is what's been contributed by owners and retained earnings is what the company has earned and the owners have elected to keep it in the business. Then what we said is capital stock increases when new stock is issued and it decreases when that stock is repurchased. Retained earnings increases when the company has net income and decreases when dividends are paid. If there are net losses that will also reduce retained earnings. But then we need to go one step further to say, well, how is net income computed? Net income is computed by revenues, which increase net income, which increase earnings and increase equity, and decreased by expenses, which decrease income, decrease earnings, and decrease equity. That is the complete expanded accounting equation. I remember watching one video by a fellow professor, Matt Fisher, and what he uses is an acronym. His acronym is WIRE. I'll just write that down over here, WIRE. That's his acronym for remembering the expanded accounting equation. In other words, all of equity can be explained by this acronym. W, withdrawals. Withdrawals would be these dividends. Stock repurchases would also be classified as withdrawals, but they're withdrawing the original capital they invested. I, investments. That would be here, stock issuances. R, revenues. E, expenses. His WIRE acronym actually is represented by what I show here. So if it works for you, I hope you will use it. In this problem, as you can see, this information about the changes in the accounts, I've moved down a little bit so we can use the format above a little more efficiently. We'll have the beginning and ending in these accounts, and then the changes will branch off from there. Here's our assets, liabilities, capital, stock, retained earnings. Assets were 50 at the beginning of the year. Liabilities were 20, and capital stock was 5. During the year, assets increased by 70. Liabilities decreased by 5, and retained earnings increased 40. Dividends paid during the year were 10. If expenses during the year were 80, compute the year's revenues. If we knew the net loss, we could solve for revenues, but we don't. But we do know that retained earnings increased by 40, and we know that the change in retained earnings is going to be equal to net income minus dividends. We know the change in retained earnings is 40. Net income, we don't know yet, but we do know that dividends are 10. So something minus 10 equals 40, and that would have to be 50. 50 minus 10 equals 40. Net income must be 50. Now that we know net income, and we know that net income is equal to all the revenues minus its expenses, we can put in the known information. Net income, 50, equals revenues, which we don't know, minus $80 in expenses. So something minus 80 equals 50. If you add 80 to both sides to get revenues by itself, you will realize that revenues must be 130. Revenues are 130. If we wanted to, we could go and solve for it. beginning retained earnings. We could solve for all the ending balances here. We could solve for the change in capital stock. But for this particular problem, all it asks for is the year's revenues, which we've concluded are 130. So if you're kind of in a rush, you may not necessarily have to go through and compute all those other numbers. If you really want to make sure you've got it right, it's helpful to fill in all the other numbers and prove the math horizontally using the expanded balance sheet equation or vertically just using the idea that the beginning number plus the change equals the ending. That's a great way to prove your work. Accountants are known for reconciling. They reconcile their work and make sure everything works together and balances. Let's go to question two. Beginning balances were assets of $100. So I'm going to put my beginning and my ending and my change here for each of these accounts, and I will put in the information given $100 beginning assets, capital stock had a beginning balance of 10, retained earnings had a beginning balance of 50, during the year assets increased by 60, liabilities increased by 20, and capital stock increased by 40. If the company recorded $10 of dividends, 
reducing retained earnings. And $90 of revenues during the year, compute the following, ending retained earnings. So we are looking for that piece of information right there. Net income, we are looking for this piece of information right there. And expenses, that piece of information right there. So I'm only going to put a box for the missing information. Can we solve for any of these right off the bat? The answer is we really can't without some additional work. You need to look at each of these as a formula. There are horizontal formulas and vertical formulas. Horizontal uses the balance sheet equation, and vertical uses the idea of beginning plus change equals ending. I'm going to solve for this horizontal expanded accounting equation. $20 of liabilities plus $40 of capital stock gives us $60 plus something equals 60. Well, that something would be zero, and mathematically that works out. Retained earnings didn't change. If retained earnings didn't change, and we started with $50 in retained earnings, and it didn't change at all, then that must mean that we ended the year with $50 of retained earnings. Next, so we'll put that in. Net income for the year. If retained earnings didn't change, and the basic formula for retained earnings is your beginning retained earnings plus your net income, minus your dividends equals your ending retained earnings. Beginning retained earnings are 50. Net income, we don't know yet, but we do know our dividends are 10, and we do know that we ended with 50. If you just solve for the unknown, as we've shown all along, 50 plus something minus 10 equals 50. Net income has to be 10. It goes up by 10, and then they get all paid out. They go up by 10 because you earn some net income, and then you pay them all out in the form of a dividend, thus leaving retained earnings at the same $50 that you began with. So this would be 10. And the formula for net income is revenues minus expenses. As you can see here, revenues minus expenses equals net income. We know the revenues to be 90. We don't know the expenses. That's what we're trying to find out, and our net income is 10. 90 minus something equals 10. That has to be expenses of 80. Let's go back and look at our question. Net income for the year is 10, and expenses for the year are 80. If you wanted to, you could go ahead and solve for all these other unknown pieces of information. Although it wasn't required, I went ahead and computed the missing pieces in the remaining portion of the expanded accounting equation. If you take your beginning assets plus 60, you get 160. In order to determine the liabilities, we had $100 in the assets, 60 of which is claimed by the owners, therefore $40 must have been funded through lenders and creditors. Once we have that, then we can continue to work our way down. Capital stock started with 10 plus 40 gives us 50. Liabilities, we just computed 40, so 40 plus 20 equals 60, and those are all the numbers. Hopefully that's helpful to you, but you need to be able to see the big picture of the expanded accounting equation and solve problems such as this. We're going to have lots of quiz questions on it. Aloha.